Bonobos. Beautiful bonobos. Hello, friendlings. This is Claw from Chicago. We're back with another Planet Zoo time lapse here today. And you guys been enjoying this series because you get to pick which animals are in the zoo. And this is going to be another fantastic episode. And today, obviously, we are working on the bonobo exhibit. But before we go there, we're going to do a little bit of touch ups at the mandrel exhibit. The first thing we're going to do is add a little fence on the outside of these walls so we don't have anyone that accidentally falls in these that could be a lawsuit waiting to happen so we put a little bit of wooden fences up just to prevent people from falling in and it looks quite nice but speaking of the mandrel exhibit it's going to be quite familiar to the bonobos as well so Planet Zoo, this series has been really popping off in the time-lapse sort of series-wise, and I do greatly appreciate it. Once again, our subscribers picked which animal was this week, and the bonobos won. And a little bit later on, we're going to be talking about the new animals that are coming into the series, and they're going to be completely opposite to Africa. They're going to be more of a, from a snowy biome. But of course, if you can't wait to the end, you can always check out the description or my comment pinned in the description talking about which animals it is and you can always comment down below which one you want to be next the one with most comments always wins but as you see here it's a very long beefy episode because we do lighting and i know a lot of people like lighting just haven't had the time to do it but we're putting the lights on every single staff door quote quote um and putting some lights there and another thing that we are doing is finally adding lights to our main sign the fredtopia sign picked by the subscribers as well fredtopia zoo so we use these fluorescent lights and i wanted to do it a little differently a little bit more realistically but we do the more realistic part on the back but we put these fluorescent lights here giving a nice bright light uh, off on the sign and I think it turns out fantastic because it's nice and bright and if you're driving past the zoo at nighttime you might be able to see the sign in the background and you might stop by because you know hey there's Fredtopia Zoo people really underestimate signs when you drive by signs you always sort of find stuff that you don't see during the day because it's obviously just popping out during the night and another thing that I wanted to do is add in some lights here on the sort of main uh walkway and we use these bulb lights these uh very classic lights and you see me put these on uh concrete blocks just so you can get a perfect distance out of them and obviously we're not going to keep them permanently on these concrete blocks we're going to delete them now but now they're perfectly spaced apart because i wanted to put lights on all sides of this walking pathway and i think what we're going to do is we're going to use these bulbs throughout our entirety of the park. We'll do a little bit of lighting here today with them, but we're gonna probably do that throughout the park with this sort of style of light bulb. Maybe get a little bit cheaper on later on, but uh, for right now, I really like them. It's a really nice spot, you know, you can come down the middle, take a picture, you know, maybe make it a postcard or something, and be like, hey, we went to Fredtopia Zoo, you got these nice lights, you can see the beautiful statues with the waterfalls and stuff like that. I don't know. Now, here's the back side. This is something I promised to do, I think, after the first episode. Never really had a chance to do that until now. And today, we're just sort of doing some basic lights here, putting some fluorescence popping off on the side. And I know this is probably the side most people would probably see, considering when they leave. So maybe it should be a little bit brighter, but I decided against it and just do uh, something a little bit more realistic, because the most of the budget was on the other side. Now, once again, with the monkeys exhibits or the... How do you say it? How do you say these? I keep forgetting it. Um, the monkey exhibits, come on, what is it called? I can't even remember it. I want them to sort of to be all the same now that we're sort of here. We've already done two that are pretty similar, and now we're gonna do the third one. Now this one's pretty much an exact copy of the mandrel exhibit, and I think it is worth it in the long run because, you know, we gotta think about consciously would we realistically build a bunch of custom parks for like a city zoo or custom uh, habitats for a city zoo probably not of course with uh there being a higher budget at our city zoo maybe we would but we're just doing sort of a little bit cheap or a way to do it here but i still think it turns out quite fantastic it's pretty realistic to how it would be in real life now, I talked on the last episode that there would be a rope 
and a string sort of blocking guests from walking down this pathway and i wanted to try to recreate what that would look like in real life here and i really think this is how it would look in real life obviously you can walk around that that would be probably a mean template if it was real life but once again you know people really should know you know that's not really where you're supposed to go there's like a closed rope that would stop 99 percent of people obviously not everyone but most people they would now of course with this being planet zoo we already know there's going to be some issues how because pass 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 i spent so much time trying to get this i stopped recording came back and tried to refix it i had no idea so the issue here is it will not let me build through it will not me, let me change any terrain that is pre-existing to the wall so you have to get to fix this you have to delete the wall then dig out the terrain then build the door but of course it's not that easy because the ground's not level so you have to sort of do it backwards it's so flipping weird but it does turn out quite well speaking of we um how would you say it uh oh my goodness how would you say it we spent so much time on this episode it, it turns out fantastic because i looked at the footage and i obviously had to speed it up because we speed it up this took over three hours to build with the lights of course uh it is a beautiful episode even though it's like sort of like the same as the mandrel but it's not it's not it's you know the bonobos so now we get a little bit cold in this video because now we will pop up a graphic you can choose between the timber wolf the snow leopard or the siberian tiger for the next episode so if you don't see my comment down below just make your own comment but if you see my comment down there comment on that tell me which animal you want to see in the next episode we'll be bringing reminders and if you don't see either of those there it's in the description so that is going to be a very special episode because if one of those animals get chosen we are going to dedicate that exhibit to one of my good friends of mine uh that i know on uh on twitch i guess you'd say um uh, don't want to say who it is but if it wins we will put it in there so make sure you guys comment down below and uh, we'll see what happens but let's go back to the bonobo exhibits so this is actually the easy part consider we got all this pathway hooked up it's a little bit curved not exactly a big fan of that but once again the guest will not be able to see this later on just trying to figure out like hey how did i do that one over there it's fine it's fine claude stop looking but we order our bonobos we get one male and one female and then order a additional female because this exhibit is a little bit uh you know we can get three of them in there i thought we could get two not as many as the mandrills the mandrills we i think we still can order a couple more but that's as much as we can get in this habitat is the three bonobos one male two female and we throw them in here see what they want they really didn't want me to change anything with the landscape at all so i don't even think i love to change anything i think i just left everything as dirt but we do some customizing buildings do a little bit of plant life as always we put the plants um near the middle or near the guests so they can't really see them uh we're gonna do that a little bit later i guess but let's start off with a uh climbable habitat of course uh we do something that is pre-built in the game but before we get there we do do our rock sort of style as we did with the mandrills sort of a copy once again like i said this was real life you would probably build both of these exhibits at the exact same time you know if this was a real park and built uh, in realistic order they would probably start off with the elephant exhibit uh and the mandrel and the bonobo exhibit and maybe whatever we do on the right and you know you be build two of the exact same uh but or two of the exact same sort of concrete boxes because underneath this dirt you would probably say there would be realistically concrete and you know you build two of those and be like you know that's all we need maybe if more people come to our zoo we'll you know build some more like in later on you could say that was the orangutans because they do have a nicer exhibit than what we have um and then you could always say the overhang that is hanging over the guest is a new addition sort of you got to think about it in that light that's what i'm sort of doing in the zoo we kind of build everything obviously to your comments uh, but once again realistically how would they build a zoo like this a city zoo they would build a big exhibit sort of close to that water pond and uh add on from there of course maybe we do it differently maybe we just built different in fredtopia zoo but once again 
we have a rock structure here. We throw a nice food pallet in the back, of course, so the animals can eat away from the guests. But we do put the water in front so the guests can see the animals. Later on in the video, we will move it back. And I think in the live version here, we'll move it back so uh, the guests can see a little bit more. But we will take the prefab buildings once again. Uh, you know, don't fix what's broke or whatever that saying is. I probably said that wrong. I'm not going to even go back to correct myself. You know what I mean. But we take some prefab buildings, sort of line them up so the bonobos can climb on here. Which, by the way, didn't really know that the bonobos can climb super duper fast. So you'll see that in the uh, the glamour shots and in the live section. But they are fly. You can see them right now. They're flying all over this. Uh, they really like this uh, climbable area. So I am very happy with that. But of course, we still have to give ourselves a little bit of customization ourselves. And we built a additional wooden platform on the side with a couple of wooden poles here. And I think I'll make one more step down. I'm per about 100% sure I'll build one more step down over here on the back. And the bonobos really like, uh, you know, sort of sitting at the top. Sadly, they're not like the mandrills, which, which they'll sit up there for, you know, a good bit of time in here. They will literally sort of just sit, take a breather, and run. Like, they're running the entire time in this exhibit. I think they're probably the most happy animals in this zoo. Uh, Fred would be very proud of us. Everyone in chat and everyone in the comment section down below. I really wish in this game, Planet Zoo, if you are watching this Frontier Developments, can you add a Highland Cow to the Planet uh, Zoo series so we can add Fred? That would be super awesome. I mean, technically, they're a, a cattle cow, but once again, it's Fred. We all need Fred in Planet Zoo. I think all content creators need a Fred in their zoo, but of course, maybe I'm just talking up a little bit. Now, we add a little sprinkler down here, put a little bit of grab ball, some other cool stuff in this park, and a little tree where the animals are can go in there and pick out the food and eat all of that. Do a little bit more customization onto the prefab builds because, of course, the prefab builds are built so animals can use it quite properly. And uh, maybe later on we'll do a com completely custom one, but, of course, we do our little custom add-ons, which I think makes it a lot better in the long run. Um, we put the jingle bells on the ground over there, that little uh, thing, and that turned out to be a good decision because it let us actually have the animals, or the bonobos, actually be able to climb up there. So that's what we do over here as well. Uh, obviously build the same thing with the stone structure out of the way so the guests can't see it uh, and see the animals because I don't want them to stress out. If they stress out, they're going to freak out. If they freak out, they're going to have a lot of problems. And I think in one of these upcoming episodes, we'll be able to let them actually turn on those stress levels and let them have eligible breeding and we actually have to start taking care of our animals because I want to see some babies in the zoo. Want to see some babies in a zoo? Want to see if they're upset with their habitat and see what's going on? There is a little bug on the screen that says there was an error, so I had to restart, come back a different day, and continue this build. And that day is now. And we are building some extra trees, sort of adding it in. So uh, it looks very nice. We copy the exact same mandrel exhibit uh, sign here, and we just write Bonobo, do our little drop shadow effect once again. If you're a content creator for any sort of video on YouTube or Twitch or anything, you want to make a cool effect, don't just use the straight font. Maybe make a drop shadow effect. Maybe put an outline. Any of those little bit of details really can make your text pop. And on this build here, we add the Bonobo sign, and we put it on both sides of this exhibit. Same thing with the Mandrills sign. Really makes it pop. That black in the background really makes it pop off that sign. It's really awesome. You can always use that in all your content creation. Now, here's the leaves that I talked about a couple minutes ago. We put it here. The guests cannot see this at all, so maybe they would freak out and say, you know, what's going on? Claude from Chicago doesn't actually have an area for their bonobos to, you know, see grass. So I added a little bit out on the side so they can see that. But, you know, maybe that informational sign would have a picture from the other angle or something like that. Because obviously, the guests cannot see over that for their safety. We order another female bon bonobo to this exhibit, making it now one male and two females. Um, and they love, love, love their habitat. Just looking at a couple of their stats, and uh, they're so cute. They're such a cute animal. Um, really, really do like it. So now we go back to the lights. 
do a little bit of lighting here in our zoo and i'm adding it down this pathway we only do this pathway because this is the pathway we're obviously working on today maybe we'll go back and do the other pathways uh, but right now, that's all we need to do. Do a couple little adjustments because they are blocking the signs, blocking the entrance realistically. So just adjust them, move them to the left, move them to the right, just so it's not uh, freaking out that much. I love these lights, and it really makes them pop out this pathway and be really realistic. Now, I know some Planet Coaster creators and Planet Zoo creators make realistic lighting, which Planet Zoo is not. But we're not going to do all of that today because um, I'm not those sort of creators. I don't want to lag my world out. But of course, that's just an excuse. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, I'm going to bring those animals up on screen once again. So make sure you comment down below. We're going to bring it up in the live section a couple times as well. You pick down below which animal is next. Uh, we do a little bit of lighting on these mandrel and bonobo signs makes it really pop out and another thing that i wanted to do too before we left is do the hippopotamus sign because that hippopotamus sign looks so flipping good uh we didn't have that originally but we came back and added a little bit of a words on there put a little bit of light and no one's gonna forget about it now this is something most of you would not really care about what we do add work zones into the parks this should help out our staff keepers find the right exhibits and work with the right animals so they get the right treatment in our zoo there's also uh, research abilities and stuff like that but considering how i'm playing we don't need to do this and here's a lot of me looking through the stats i know uh, some people ask me like hey claude show me the stats here's the stats uh you're not really missing out on much because most of this is uh just minor details we're gonna go to the live section in a second fred lanes we'll see you soon well, Fredlings, we're coming out of that live shot, and apparently there were protesters on our zoo, but they're leaving because I did something well. They gotta forget that I have to unpause before you uh, protest. <laughs> they're sitting here, like, protesting, I guess, that the bonobos weren't having a good, fair treatment, but once again, I was paused and unpaused for, like, three seconds, so come on, man. But... We are here in the live action of Fredtopia Zoo, and I hope you enjoyed that time lapse, of course. And we have finally done our lighting pass, one of our many lighting passes here to come. And we have this beautiful sign, Fredtopia Zoo, glowing up by, I guess, fluorescent lights is what we would call that. Um, boy, because this is the best light that I could do without it looking very, very weird. Uh, did some lights for the lions over here, which there was lights on the side, but not for the lions. So I put these in the ground. I made them flat, so if you walk over them, they're sort of, like, in the ground. I still got to put some stuff here, some, like, benches or something, so people can stop glitching through my wall. Uh, walls, so that's a, a next time thing. But this is how it looks on this side. When you're leaving the park, it is a little bit cheaper on the lighting, just because in real zoos, uh, usually people, I mean, more people would be leaving at nighttime seeing this. Um, and it would be a little bit less. But, uh, you know, if you're coming in at the park at nighttime, you see this nice big bright sign even if you're driving by. So that's why I did it that way. I really like how I put these uh, these bulbs here, these sort of bulbs that we got here, the uh, lightning posts. Uh, really, really like them. This is probably a good spot. You could probably take a nice picture for a card or uh, an opening or something. It was really nice. I want to do some lights here. Maybe we'll come back and do some lights on these um, statues and stuff but i really like how this turned out it's nice and bright here now in this game the lighting is not realistic in a sense and i know there's people like rudy rinkamel and a couple other people that does light does lighting really well but we're not going to do that just because it's a little bit laggy um we could do that of course but we'll get to that later on if we do this zoo is really popping off. We got 1,500 people in the zoo. We've got light bulbs all the way down here, and it's quite uh, packed, which is great to see for our money making efforts. And here is the bonobo exhibit. The bonobo exhibit, obviously, uh, is once again a copy of the mandrills exhibit. But I think this works because in most zoos, you need to have some repetitive stuff for being cheaper. Um, and it really looks nice. And I think the next, um, what do you call it? primate that we put in will probably be a copy of the orangutan exhibit over here uh, just different buildings on the inside and something that i did as well is copy the really the exact same sign because it matches quite well it looks really nice we did some lighting with the rocks but the bonobos i really re i always say they like nicer and nicer each time we go but when we look into the exhibits because usually these uh animals should be sleeping at this time and usually the park is closed we'll turn up the brightness a little bit 
but you get a good, good view of the bonobos from up top here. Now, you can't see everything because it's a little bit closer than the mandrills, but you can see the bonobos in the background over there. Maybe they're waiting for a snack or something. Obviously, once again, you have the hidden sort of uh, cage down here that they are, um, how would you say it? You know, you can't see them sleeping. I, you just got to make sure that they don't get you dressed up. Obviously, I don't know if I did it in this episode or the last one, but I will say it again. There is a wooden fence here just in case if somebody jumps over this fence, which they shouldn't be. Uh, there is a little bit of a catch just in case. Uh, on this side, there is no catch, but once again, you shouldn't be jumping over the fence. Just for one of those Moshe reasons. That's why we want to give ourselves a little bit of an edge here just in case. Uh, obviously, not, you know, needed, but just in case. Now, before we go, I want to move this back just a little bit because I thought you could see a little bit more. And I was like, mm, should we continue? Like, should I keep talking about this being here? Let's move that back just slightly more. Maybe this will look a little bit better from the guest perspective. By the way, I remember to put benches in this time. <laughs> so from a guest perspective, that looks so much nicer. Now, can the bonobos actually uh, look at this? Let's go to the press heat maps with the H, click on the bonobo. Let's see, so the blue is where they can go. Really, where anybody can walk. Even the keepers, they can walk up here. They can climb up all these poles. This is a nice, good train. By the way, here's this green um, lines that I was talking about that they can walk on. So anything with the green lines is what the bonobos can use. And here we go. They are drinking some water here. Now, we have one male and two females in this exhibit. We can always add more later on. But I think this is probably right about the size where they start getting socially upset if you add more yeah we're just under navigable navigational area and just under unclimbable area just under so they still got a good bit to go i really like how this exhibit turned out with the greenery here um, obviously most of this greenery here you will not see as a person so they might be complaining that oh there's not enough greenery bruh just do that just so it's a little bit different. We could put the greenery in the back, but I wanted these uh, bonobos to sort of, you know, if they want to hide, they can hide in the little brush here away from guests. I, like, obviously it's so weird coming from, you know, people that are not being stared at every single day of the year. Uh, sort of the, the pressures of that. So at least I give them a couple of spaces to hide and stuff. Uh, the bonobos can obviously come up to this level and you can see that they are quite, quite fast. They could see the guests, they could wave at them and stuff like that. But we have to remember with these... The monkeys, I don't know, I keep forgetting their names. The monkeys, the bono, well, they're the bonobos, but I mean... Huh. I can't remember what it was, I just said it like six times earlier. But they can't, the primates, they can't jump out from this. Everything's built in the middle. They can't jump out. There's nothing they can really pick up and grab. This is something, this is like one of those things that are bolted into the ground or made of heavy concrete. So they couldn't pick this up and bring it to the top. I don't think the bonobos even have the strength to do that. Uh, but it is quite nice. Let's read some fun facts of the bonobo before we talk about our new animal in the exhibit. So some fun facts about the bonobo. Uh, there are roughly, well, the bonobos are endangered on this scale, and there's roughly 29,500 to 50,000 left in the world. Their natural origins area is sort of the m middle of Africa, the continent of Africa. They are pretty cool. So let's go to some of the fun facts. Let's go to fun fact number one. Bonobos use such tools such as stones and hammers and have been known to fashion sticks into spears using their teeth. Okay, that gives us another reason why we should move them away from the guests. Fun fact number two, bonobos have very high empathy and they will help stranger bonobos even when they, even when there is no reward for themselves. That's, that's definitely a 10 out of 10 play. Bonobos, communicate through their expressions, gestures, and vocalizations, and are the most vocal of the great apes, including, excluding humans, excluding humans. 
Bonobos are very uncomfortable with conflict and compete for food or mates is likely to be solved by sharing rather than fighting. Okay. Bonobos are very physical, affectionate to their counterparts, and they are only species other than humans to tongue kiss. Ew. But that's some fun facts on the bonobo. So I hope you Fredlings really enjoyed this episode here. I don't know how I'm going to do these glamour shots because I haven't filmed them yet, but these bonobos are having such... Oh my god! He yeeted that! He, he literally yeeted that! Did you see that? Oh my goodness. He literally yeeted that at me. But thank you so much again, Fredlings, for watching this. If you want to check out the rest of our Planet Coaster or Planet Zoo series, they are linked in the description. Planet zoos just like this and before we go let's take a look at our live animals for the next time so for the next episode you guys can pick from between these three animals the timber wolf the siberian tiger or the snow leopard i will let you choose that right now in the comment section down below we're gonna go with some glamour shots fredlings we will see you next week for another episode of fredtopia zoo